Boxwoods are one of our favorite plants in the gardens. They create structure and form throughout the winter and all, all through the year. Uh, one of the main concerns we have with them recently is boxwood blight, and I'm here with David Cook to talk a little bit more about it. There is a disease now that is going to be fairly new to Davidson County, and we're not going to cause a lot of excitement and people start buying these beautiful boxwood plants. But this is an example of boxwood from my yard, and actually there's nothing wrong with these leaves right here. Mm -hmm. Now, if we do start seeing decline in yellowing or black spots appearing on a boxwood. Now this is just not gonna happen. Boxwoods uh, have issues with diseases, which they've always had in our area. Tennessee, a temperate, humid climate, diseases prevail. But in this photo down here, we can see that we have dark, circular, but somewhat irregular leaf spots. This is not a common appearance of boxwood leaves in the Tennessee area now. Now, this is a disease called boxwood blight. And if we call a disease a blight, that means it, it, it develops rapidly. And boxwood blight from spore to sporulating conditions can occur in one week in wow. Tennessee. So we can look at temperatures in, in the mid 40s up to the 70s. So this is, uh, this is a long period of time in Tennessee when this disease could attack boxwoods. Now, why would we have this disease? It will only be in Tennessee if the plant material that's infected is brought into our area. And so this disease actually was in uh, United Kingdom in, in, in the 90s. Okay. Plants uh, were brought over here. It was, uh, it was diagnosed in Connecticut and in North Carolina. North Carolina is a big boxwood growing, you know that, mm -hmm. uh, state. Yeah. And so, because conditions are great for growing boxwoods there. So what happens if that disease gets on a plant and you don't see the symptoms? Well, we're going to buy these plants, commercial landscapers install them in. Sure. So what do we need to do? We need to look for symptoms. So what will happen, a symptom would be very easy to see sometimes. A symptom on this leaf may actually look like a black spot. So if I started seeing black spots appearing like this, that's not the normal appearance of that leaf. And we do not have a disease in Tennessee of boxwoods that, that takes on that symptom. See, we're not seeing the disease, we're seeing how the plant responds to that. So again, if that starts up, and then if we start seeing black streaking, vertical streaking on the stem, this is what we, thought we call, refer to as a canker. This would be a localized infection. Now, the problem with a stem infection is that it interferes with the movement of water and nutrients. So everything above this area may start to decline and this, this stem area actually may die because this is the fungal infection is actually feeding on, on tissue right here, mm -hmm. causing death of this. You may get, it may start spreading to more areas like this. We don't have a disease that takes on this physical symptom right here. So these black lesions, elongated lesions, are, are common with boxwood blight. The, unfortunately, the, the most common symptom is complete defoliation. Yeah. And if someone has a boxwood in their landscape, or a, a landscape professional puts some boxwoods in, and then after a short period of time, when temperatures are, say, 50s, 60s, 70s, if that boxwood completely defoliates, drops its leaves, that is a good indication of a boxwood blight. Mm -hmm. And so, Department of Ag should be notified, or the UT Extension agent in that county mm -hmm. should be notified to come out and, and look at that plant it should be removed out of the landscape and actually destroyed. But we want a positive identification mm -hmm. and we want to remove that plant so we slow down the spread of this disease. Now, generally when we, we have diseases or insects that enter this country and we, we've known about them for a decade and they get here, eventually some of the problems we can manage well, some we cannot manage well. I'm afraid this is one that's going to be a little more difficult to manage. When the weather gets very hot, it's amazing that in the 90s, this disease just stops. And very hot temperatures actually stop this disease in its tracks. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm sure this would be a common question for a lot of people. What would be an, uh, an acceptable replacement for a boxwood? If somebody had one die of that, what would you recommend to put in there? I would probably recommend uh, uh, maybe a variety of small leaf holly shrub. Okay. See, that when we look at the leaves on the boxwood, they are small. Mm -hmm. 
And you know, it's amazing that some people actually will buy uh, certain cultivars of hollies thinking they've bought a boxwood. <laughs> like an inkberry? Yeah, 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 and there's nothing wrong with that. I tell people, I think the boxwood is like the BMW of plants. <laughs> the holly is, is, is another make, I won't a mention car. A Honda. <laughs> Honda's a good car, there's nothing wrong with Honda. But it's like, it's not a BMW, uh -huh. but it, it is great standalone plant. Sure. So you can, you can have a plant that resembles another one, mm -hmm. uh, but we gotta remember that with hollies, they also have issues too. Mm -hmm. they, have, they are very prone to root rot diseases. So mm -hmm. once we establish plants, we need to back off on watering, really back off on watering. We love our plants to death. Well, thank you for all that good information on boxwoods and boxwood blight. Um, so to recap, what are some things we can do to prevent just diseases in general and spreading? Okay, now got to remember that we can't control them, but we can manage them. So okay. if we are pruning using hand loppers pruning tools, it's good to disinfect. And what's some disinfectants we could use? We could use a mixture of bleach and water, mm -hmm. dip the pruning tools in for 30 seconds to a minute. With bleach, we need to then rinse that off. Bleach can be corrosive. Lysol spray, which is a type of alcohol, is an excellent disinfectant for huh. fungal diseases and bacterial diseases of the plants. And Lysol generally doesn't have to be wiped off. You, you can with a little wet rag. Yeah. I generally carry two pruning tools. Uh -huh and I disinfect one and then grab the other one and prune. So we don't want it to be the vector of the diseases, spread them. Uh, again, we look for disease-resistant plants. Disease-resistant, that's the key right there. But we gotta be careful of pruning. If, if disease leaf tissue falls to the ground, we try a cultural practice of trying to remove as much as we can because while the spores are there. Sure, great. Well, thank you, appreciate that. Great You're tips. Welcome. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.